Hello, Cyclocross friends, and welcome to another episode of Max's Cyclocross Television. We are at Goddard Memorial State Park in Warwick, Rhode Island for the NBX Grand Prix of Cyclocross. This classic beach race is a staple of New England Cyclocross in the final weekend of the Victoria New England Cyclocross Series. We are at the start of the Men's C1 race for one of the last big tests before U.S. Cyclocross Nationals. Race favorites Curtis White and Kerry Werner are there, and they are joined by a trio of riders still on the men from injury, Spencer Petrov, Jeremy Powers, and Stephen Hyde. And at the start, it's Hyde in the Stars and Stripes with the early jump, White in the blue and white Victoria Series leader jersey, Werner in maize and gray, and Petrov in green are also there. After the prologue, the field loops back across the course and hits the planks in mass. Hyde leads with White, Werner, and Garno Easton's Jack Kisberth in fourth. A quick look back by Hyde and they're off. Petrov, Powers, and Cannondale Cyclocross World Devo's Sam Knoll, leader of the NECX U23 series, are also there. The beach is the iconic feature at NBX. It is a deep sand section that on paper seems to be faster to run than ride. Hyde evidently doesn't take the paper and uses that little bit of extra on-bike pedaling before bumping the wall to get a small gap. As the field enters the woods, Hyde is leading with White, Kisaberth, and Werner not far behind. The rest of the field is already stretching out. The technical bits in the woods reshuffled the leaders with Hyde and White still in front and Carey now in third. Kisaberth, Petrov and Noel follow with Powers, Justin Lindeen and Scott Smith not far behind. At the start of lap two and the leaders are at the limestone steps leading to the roundhouse. Hyde, White and Werner have established a small lead over the next trio of Kisaberth, Petrov and Noel. Back at the sand and we can see the advantage staying on the bike yields as Hyde is able to gain a bit of ground over White and Werner. The beach section at NBX has been significantly longer in the past. This year the organizers decided to use the staircase and veranda on the beachside building to add a new challenge. The top six have separated themselves from the rest of the 52 strong men's field. In the woods, White moved to the front and began to push the pace. Hyde later said that this early moto pacing section behind White was just what he needed to see where his race fitness was after four weeks riding on the trainer. The pace on the pedal heavy sections has gapped Werner who is alone in third. Back at the beach and White is able to mitigate Hyde's advantage by being first to the sand. Notice how Hyde uses the wall to keep his balance and help him stay on the bike. Thank you, appreciate it. In the battle for fifth, Sam Knoll makes a nice pass in the sand after Kisaberth dismounts a tad late. Into the Rudy Woods and Hyde leads the way over White. The Cannondale Cyclocross World teammates aren't attacking each other this early in the hour, just racing hard and separating themselves from the field. As Werner comes through, he can see the gap to Hyde and White on their way back. Petrov continues to chase down Werner as Kisaberth and Noel continue their battle a bit farther back. Hyde leads White up the limestone steps. The perpetual question at that feature is whether you can single step or take two at a time. I believe the answer lies somewhere in between, but more on that in a bit. For now, we can see the gap between Werner and Petrov is about the same. Kisaberth continues to lead Noel, who is glued to his back wheel. Through the woods and the buddy movie at the front continues with Hyde and White riding together.
Behind them, it's getting interesting with Petrov catching and now leading Werner. Noel is now leading Kizabirth in the next pair down the standings. Powers drives to pace in the next group. As the leaders head towards pit two, Hyde is back on the front with White on his wheel. These two are comfortably drilling it and opening up a significant gap over everyone else. Werner gains a few seconds over Petrov in the technical section. His goal at this point is to prevent a Cannondale Cyclocross World podium sweep. In the close battle behind, Kizperth and Noel continue to ride as one. On the finishing stretch, Petrov uses the downhill tarmac to slingshot by Werner before the stairs. The status quo remains in place behind with Kizabirth leading Noel. Every turn in the sandy dirt sections of the track have defined ruts. When you get in them, you can rail the turns. Here, White and Hyde demonstrate. White again gets the lead spot going into the sand and Hyde decides to run this one out. Behind, Petrov leads Werner. Shoulder or push? Everyone has their preference. Note how Werner keeps one hand on his stem and has his other arm free to help his running form. As we see Noel now leading Kizabirth, it's interesting to note the leader in our small sample shoulders while the trailer pushes. Probably a coincidence, but hey, still worth noting. Also in contrast to Werner, Kizabirth opts for two hands on the bars. In the wooded section, we get a good look at the rutted, rooty sections on this punchy climb. Petrov leads Werner up the climb. The battle for third is becoming a highly strategic one with several lead changes. Kizabirth is back in front of Noel in the battle for fifth. No change for the leaders, but behind, Werner has again gone in front of Petrov as they continue to leapfrog each other. Werner remains in front as the pair reaches the planks. Kizabirth is in front of Noel as that duo is also at the planks. After the beach and the staircase, the leaders remain on the veranda of the building and travel down the access ramp. It's a quirky part of the track that gives a bit more post-beach recovery for racers than in years past, where the exit of the sand was full gas. As Hyde hits the tarmac, he puts in a little dig and gains a few seconds on white. Behind, Petrov and Werner continue their chess game. Petrov gives Werner a couple looks to see if he's coming around. 
Werner stays the course. As those two head towards the woods, Hyde is already on his way back and he has established his gap over White as they head toward the steep power climb off the traffic circle. Before we see what's happening with Werner and Petrov, let's go back and look at how Hyde was able to get that extra second on White. Coming out of the woods, White comes into the turn a bit too hot and gets the rut all wrong. He keeps it upright, but that bobble puts him a few more bike lengths behind. Back to real time and Petrov continues to stare down Werner, who finally relents and takes over at the front. Kizabirth continues to lead Noel, not far behind. At the sand with one to go and Hyde is back in front. White had closed the gap but Hyde is opening it back up. Up the stairs and down the pavement and Hyde uses the advantage gained in the sand to stretch out the lead. Back to the sand and Werner continues out front as the battle with Petrov continues. Notice that Werner is leading this time through the sand and is now shouldering rather than pushing as he did while trailing. Theory or coincidence? You decide. On the final laps and Hyde has opened up a decent lead over White who continues to go all out in hopes of catching back on before the finish. At the steps, the lead is about the same. Let's go back to the question of whether the best way to climb this feature is by taking one or two steps at a time. My answer, both. Watch as Petrov double steps every other step. It's all in detail, cyclocross friends. In the battle for fifth, Kizabirth is finally able to separate himself from the pesky Sam Knoll. Up the power climb one last time for Hyde and White. And at the finish, it's an emphatic return to racing for Stephen Hyde as he takes the emotional win at the NBX Grand Prix of Cyclocross. White is second, and in a sprint to the line, Werner is able to come around Petrov for third. Really good. Great job. Hey, uh, it feels really good. I, this has been a long year, and I've uh, it's been a lot of it just makes me relax, man. A lot of anxiety and uh, <laughs> Joy right now, and um, it feels really, really good to be back here. I, I mean, I raced here in 2012 uh, was the last time as my first year as an elite racer, and uh, 2013 I had an knee injury. And I, I came out as a mechanic, and this, this is my return here, and I couldn't be happy. I gotta ask you, you're watching the internet. Well, you know, it's funny we talked about that last race when uh, in 2012. He was racing with the Masters Racers as a junior in, uh, on Cliff Bar, and I remember seeing him running around. He looked smaller than Harrison then, and, and uh, baby brother definitely grew up. He's a monster. I mean, I, I can't tell you those first three laps, I was like, Curtis is going to drop me 100%. He's, he's on form. And uh, I think some point during the race, I looked at him and I said, hey, man, you're riding incredible, and you absolutely deserve to win today. And he, he just rode unreal, so it's, it's really good to see him. 
Thanks for tuning in to Max's Cyclocross Television. If you like the episode, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And hey, if you really dug it, tell your cyclocross friends. See you for the next one.